Mansour Adaifi, known to DeSantis as Detainee 441. Mansour, sold to the U.S. by Afghan warlords after 9-11, was a totally innocent teenager held at Guantanamo Bay from 2002 until 2016, so he has a robust knowledge of life and torture at Gitmo. He told me that not only was DeSantis there for what he called the worst year of his entire imprisonment, but DeSantis was a notorious figure who didn't just know about, but observed and participated in illegal acts of torture and in fact seemed to take great pleasure in their suffering. I want to talk about how Ron DeSantis helped the military and the CIA torture people at Guantanamo Bay. Bring. He reveals that the job of DeSantis was not to ensure human rights were respected, but to ensure that they were violated to the worst degree. Just a warning, the following interview contains some graphic descriptions of torture. It was a mission, and he was there. All of them were was watching, the, the colonel, officers, you know, doctors, nurses. And not just that, they used to also beat us. And if we scream or pain, bleeding came out on our nose and mouth, they would like, eat. The only word they told you, eat, eat. You see, he was there to advocate for the prisoners. But what he did instead was tell the torturers what was working. So we went again on hunger strike. We were some force feeding. You know, it was really, it was torture. We were bleeding all the time. And I saw a handsome person who was coming. He said, I'm here to ensure that you're treating humanely. And we said, okay, this is our demand. You know, we were not asking for much, you know. At the beginning, he was just... It was Ron DeSantis. Yes, exactly. The person. He said, I'm here to ensure you're being treated humanely. Yes, exactly. And if you have any, if you have any uh, problems, if you have any concerns, if you have... Just talk to me. And, you know, at the, we, 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 we were drowning in that place. I'm like, oh, this is cool. That person actually... Uh, Driving something, he will raise the concerns, but it was piece of the game. What they what they were doing, they were they were looking what hurt you more to use it against you. By the end of 2005, 2006, when he was there, one of the worst time at Guantanamo, literally. In first feeding, I swear by my God, Mike, they brought you know piles of insure and they start force feeding us over and over again, and. Uh, Ron DeSantis was there and watching us. We were crying, screaming. We were tied to the feeding chair. And that guy, he was watching that, he was laughing basically. It was hurt like hell. And I was screaming like, when I was, I was screaming, I look at him. And he, he was actually smiling like as someone who enjoying it. <laughs> when they used to feed us because we, you can, the, the, our stomach cannot hold this amount of insulin. They used to pour insulin one can after another, one can after another. So when he approached me, I said, this is the way we are treated. You said, you should start to eat. I threw up in his face, literally on his face. Ron DeSantis. In his face, yeah. They used to, you know, restrain us in the in the, the feeding chair, which like, you know, like eight point, they tied our, our heads, our shoulder, our, our wrist, our thighs and our legs. And they came and that would really thick tube, they call it uh, French 17 or something, through our nose. And they keep doing this over and over again, and they put some kind of um, laxative in the, in the feeding liquid with like we in ourselves all the time. For a very short time early in his campaign, Ron DeSantis would mention served at Guantanamo Bay. But he stopped doing that because the very next question would be, what was your job? And he had no answer for that. Saying that DeSantis initially, because he presented himself as the lawyer whose job it was to ensure you're being treated humanely, then you and other detainees told him the things that were the hardest for you to deal with, the things that you felt needed to change. And then instead of actually making sure those things changed and that your human rights are respected, he then basically like was gathering intelligence to then tell the prison camp and the interrogators, what it was that was impacting you most so they could do it more to you. Exactly, that would have been there because the things we used to tell them, it turned, it turned against us. Everything we talked to him become multiple because he was looking at the impact on you, what hurt you more. So he stopped bringing it up. But Ron DeSantis did serve at Gitmo and Ron DeSantis was in those torture chambers and Ron DeSantis helped make sure 
that that torture was effective. He told him exactly what to do because the prisoners had told him what was hurting. Ron DeSantis was there all the time because his job to walk around and talk to prisoners. Like, I'm sure to ensure you're being too humility. I'm like, I'm telling Americans, if this, if this guy, if this, if this is humanity, this guy is torture, is a criminal. He can stand up there in his spotless white boots and his spotless white wife and pretend that he's the perfect American family man. But I think we all know what Donald Trump has on Ron DeSantis. And it's not what you think. But if it ever came out that Ron DeSantis was in the torture chambers, it'd be the end of his candidacy. And Donald Trump has seen the paperwork. I'm Zachariah, Lone Star Liberal. Y'all take it easy.